ever heard of a film being smuggled out of a country in a cake? Yeah, sounds like something out of a movie itself, right? But that's just a taste of the wild ride we're about to take as we deep dive into This Is Not a Film. This is the work of Jafar Panahi, the acclaimed Iranian director you might know from films like The White Balloon, The Circle, and Offside, each one a powerful exploration of social issues, especially the lives of women in Iran. And what makes This Is Not a Film so fascinating is that it comes at a pivotal moment in Panahi's career. Imagine this. It's 2011. And Panahi is at the top of his game, internationally celebrated, but back home in Tehran. He finds himself under house arrest. Exactly. Slapped with a 20-year filmmaking ban from the Iranian government. Can you imagine the stories trapped inside, the creative energy suddenly bottled up? A filmmaker forbidden from filmmaking talk about an impossible situation. So how does he even begin to approach this to make a film when he's literally banned from doing so? That's the brilliance of it. Panahi turns his apartment into his own personal film set, his iPhone, a rebellious tool to document his life under these restrictions. He gives us a glimpse into his daily routines, frustrations bubbling to the surface, and that's where This Is Not A Film is born. It's a statement, a challenge to the very definition of filmmaking. It's like he's saying, you want to silence me? Fine, but you can't silence my existence. And by documenting it, even the most mundane moments become charged with this sense of defiance. Absolutely. There's a scene described in a piece from Slate where Panicky unrolls a large carpet in his living room. He begins using it to map out scenes, almost like a stage, for the film he's forbidden to create. It's such a poignant visual, don't you think? It really drives home the frustration, right? This tangible representation of these invisible chains he's trying to break free from. Exactly. And this is where the film, or perhaps more accurately non-film, takes on these fascinating layered meanings. It becomes a commentary not just on censorship, but on filmmaking itself. What are the essential elements of film? Is it the equipment? A traditional script? The act of directing others? Panahi dissects these very notions in front of our eyes. It's like he's asking us, can art exist outside the traditional boundaries we've set for it? Can a film exist even if it's never projected on a big screen? Precisely. And remember, he's not navigating this alone. His friend and fellow filmmaker, Mojtaba Murtamaz, is there with him documenting this whole process. Which, let's be real, was a huge risk in itself. This wasn't just a creative exercise, it was an act of defiance. Absolutely. According to NPR, Panahi was facing a six-year prison sentence. This non-film, this act of creation, was a direct challenge to the Iranian government. And there are these moments, like the one with his daughter's iguana, that add another layer to this. The Slate article describes the iguana roaming through the apartment, perching itself on a bookcase, almost as if it's mockingly observing Panny struggling to create. It's almost comical, and yet there's this underlying tension, this feeling that at any moment it could all be taken away. Exactly. And that's what makes these seemingly insignificant moments so powerful. They highlight Panahi's resilience, this ability to find humor and even absurdity in the face of oppression. And it speaks to a universal human truth. Even in the darkest of times, the creative spirit finds a way to persevere. But the question is, how did this non-film make it out into the world? That's where the cake comes in. It does. And that's a story for the ages, my friend. We'll unpack that as we dive deeper into the impact of this is not a film. Okay, so we've got this non-film, this act of artistic rebellion trapped inside Iran. How does it escape? This is where the story gets even wilder. A USB drive hidden inside a cake. You can't make this stuff up. It sounds like something straight out of a spy thriller, right? Yeah. But it worked. This cake carrying This Is Not A Film yeah. gets smuggled all the way to the Cannes Film Festival. Talk about a grand entrance. What was the reaction like when the film debuted? Electric, the film world was captivated. Critics were blown away by its ingenuity and its message. I bet. What were critics saying? The Washington Post, according to the film's Wikipedia page, called it Brechtian. That refers to the playwright Bertolt Brecht, who challenged traditional theatrical norms. His work often broke the fourth wall and used techniques like alienation to make audiences aware they were watching a constructed reality. So how does that apply to this is not a film? Panny, much like Brecht, is intentionally blurring the lines between fiction and reality. He's drawing attention to the act of filmmaking itself, making us question what we're seeing and how we're seeing it. That's fascinating. It's like he's turning his limitations into this entirely new form of artistic expression. Exactly. And the reviews reflected this. This is not a film. As a 97% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, 
Critics and audiences alike were blown away by its simplicity, its rawness, and its powerful message about artistic freedom. This wasn't just a film, it became a global phenomenon. Absolutely. It sparked conversations about censorship, the role of art in society, huh. and the lengths to which governments will go to silence dissent. And it wasn't just happening in Iran. People all over the world connected with Panahi's story. It became a rallying cry for artists facing similar struggles. It's proof that art has this incredible power to transcend borders and ignite dialogue. It certainly does. And for Panahi, who was physically confined to his apartment, this global response must have been incredible to know that his message was breaking free, reaching audiences far beyond the walls that sought to contain him. Speaking of reaching beyond walls, I'm curious, what was the official response in Iran to the film's success? That's a great question and unfortunately not an easy one to answer while this is not a film, brought international attention to Panahi's situation and the plight of artists in Iran. It didn't lead to any immediate changes in his sentence or the government's stance on censorship. That's disheartening, but not entirely surprising. Sadly, no. But what it did do was solidify Panahi's status as a symbol of resistance. It showed the world that even in the face of oppression, creativity finds a way. That's a powerful message, one that continues to resonate today. Absolutely. This is not a film. It's a testament to the enduring spirit of art. It's a reminder that even in the darkest of times, a flicker of creativity can ignite a firestorm of hope and change. It's incredible to think about the ripple effects of this one act of artistic defiance, how this non-film forced the world to confront the realities of censorship and the power of creative expression. Yeah, it's a powerful reminder that art can be a form of protest, mm -hmm. a way to challenge authority and speak truth to power. And in Panahi's case, he does it with such intentionality. Even the title itself, This Is Not a Film, is a challenge. It's like he's forcing us to question our assumptions about what constitutes art. Precisely, he's highlighting the absurdity of the situation the Iranian government tries to silence him to erase his voice as a filmmaker. And in response, he creates a film that directly confronts those restrictions, even incorporating them into the narrative. It's like he's saying, you can try to define what I can and cannot do, but ultimately it's the act of creation itself that matters. Exactly. And there's something incredibly inspiring about that, that it reminds us that creativity cannot be truly contained or suppressed. It will always find a way to express itself even in the most unexpected forms. And that even in the face of seemingly insurmountable obstacles, one person's determination to create can have a global impact. Absolutely. Panahi's story is a testament to the power of resilience of finding hope and humor in the darkest of times. It's a reminder that even when we feel silenced or censored, our creativity can be a powerful tool for resistance and change. So as we reach the end of our deep dive into This Is Not A Film, what do you think is the most important takeaway for our listeners? That's a great question. I think it's the idea that art matters, that it has the power to challenge, to inspire, to connect us across borders and cultures, and that even when it's suppressed or censored, it finds a way to break free and make its voice heard. Beautifully said. And it leaves us with something to ponder what seemingly impossible creative acts might be unfolding right now, just beyond our view. And what can we do to amplify those voices and support artists who are fighting for their right to create freely? Those are questions worth pondering indeed. This has been an incredible deep dive into the world of Jafar Panahi and the enduring power of creative expression. Yeah. Until next time, keep exploring those hidden gems. And remember, sometimes the most profound stories are hidden in plain sight, like a film smuggled out in a cake.